welcome to the Knitting with Cat Hair podcast. My name is Nikki. I'm also known as Knitting with Cat Hair on Instagram and Cat Hair Knitting on Ravelry. I'm coming to you from Sudbury, Ontario, Canada, which lies atop the traditional lands of the Tegamishing Anishinaabek people, where I live my, with my fiance, our two daughters, and our five cats. And if this is your first time here, a big warm welcome and a big welcome back to all returning viewers. Um, I really appreciate you guys taking time out of your day to spend with me. So this is primarily a knitting podcast and today I have for you one finished object, three new cast-ons, um, and some visible mending. Yeah, so it should be, um, oh and one update, sorry, one update on an, an older whip. It should be a um, jam-packed episode, I hope. Um, yeah, so I'm just gonna get right into things. Um, I'll start with what I am wearing. So today I am wearing my, this is also my, my finished object. I'm wearing my new dishing top, which is a pattern by Leila Raven. I knit it up out of Illimani Sabri, which is a combination of organic cotton and alpaca. I think it's 85%, yes, 85% organic cotton, 15% baby alpaca. There are 400 meters of 437 yards per skein and here's the tag and for this I used two different colors the colors are just numbers so I used color 84 and then color it's called 81 to 84 so it's you can see this one has like a combination of a bunch of different colors in it presumably four different colors so yeah I held these two together uh, I would say they're like a definitely like a light fingering on their own. So paired together, um, yeah, they were more of a maybe DK weight, maybe sport weight. I think the pattern itself actually calls for Aaron weight. So my gauge was, um, was a little bit off. However, the, the pattern is designed with quite a bit of positive ease in it. Um, I can't remember exactly what it is offhand but I know for the size that I made um, I think even with my gauge it was going to give me something like 11 inches of positive ease I don't know maybe I didn't measure it to be honest so I'm not sure if I actually achieved that but it's definitely roomy and um, I will I'll pop in a picture so you can see what it looks like on um, it's just too hard for me to show here, but yeah, I'll pop in that picture so you can see. And um, yeah, I made the size three. I used US nine or 5.5 millimeter needles to knit it up. So it's knit at, as you can tell, a fairly loose gauge. So I've had to wear, I'm wearing a little tank top underneath, like a beige tank top. And you can see it features this beautiful lace down the front. And in terms of modifications, all I did was make it a little bit longer. So I added in two lace repeats and omitted the sleeves. So you'll see in the original picture, which I'll pop in now, <laughs> that it has, um, I think it's full length sleeves actually. I'm pretty sure it was full length. And so I just, I just didn't do the sleeve additions. Um, so yeah, it's knit bottom up in no, it is not knit bottom up. It is knit top down, but in panels. So you knit the, fr knit the front panel first. You do the wonderful lace. So you're basically making like a square or a rectangle. And then you do the back. The back, I did not choose to put lace on mine, although you could. Um, I just kept it straight stockinette. So you, and then you knit the second panel and then you just seam up. Oh, sorry, you do the shoulder seams first and that kind of creates your little drop shoulder sleeves and then you seam up the sides and that is it but it's very simple um, because of the larger needles and the looser gauge it knit up very quickly you know if you're a monogamous knitter you could probably get this done in a week maybe less like it was it was very quick um yeah so i'm really happy with it it's i think it'll be good for summer i'm the one thing I'm concerned about, and this was flagged actually, um, I think it was Nicole who left a comment 
on my last podcast and let me know that she knit something. It was a cardigan, I believe, out of Elamani Sabri, and that ended up stretching down to her knees, like over time, I guess. So, I mean, cotton and alpaca both have, I think, a reputation for stretching. So I've not washed or blocked this, truth be told. I have woven in all the ends, but I'm, I'll be interested to see how, how the garment wears over time. And I will definitely check back in with you guys and just let you know, because I think it's important, especially if you're considering making something out of this yarn. And um, I'm hoping, because I had heard, I can't remember where I heard this, it might have been on Fruity Knitting back in the day, one of the episodes I watched, but I had heard something about garments that are seamed have more structure and that it actually helps them hold their shape a little better. Um, so I'm hoping the fact that this cotton top, cotton alpaca top is seamed is going to actually play in its favor and that, um, you know, it, it won't stretch as much as it would if you just knit it fully in the round. Although I did see that some people converted it to fully in the round. Uh, the other thing I modified that I forgot to mention is the actual fiber type. So the original is knit up in, I think it's Quince & Co. Um, it's the linen. I think it's 100% linen base. I can't remember what it is called, um, but yeah. So I obviously didn't use linen, um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing how this wears and it's, it's perfect for summer. Not that it's summer temperatures out here, I'm gonna be honest. I'm filming outside because it's sunny and it seemed relatively quiet. My neighbors seem very quiet today and I'm off. It's a Friday and I'm off. So I took this advantage to, to film outside, but our temperatures are in the single digits right now. So I don't know if you can see, okay, behind me, I have a, I did not knit this. It's a, just a cabled cardigan that actually a friend of mine gave to me. I have that just in case I get chilly, I can throw it on top. Um, but for now, I seem to be doing okay. Okay, so that was what I'm wearing and my first finished object. So now I'll move into an update on my Marie Wallen project. So just to let you know, we are holding a Marie Wallen knit along over on Instagram. You just have to use the hashtag a year of Marie Wallen Cal and have started your project after August 1st of this of last year. And it's running until August 1st of this year. You don't have to finish your project. I don't know if I've ever said that, but you don't have to finish. You just have to start it and post pictures on Instagram with the hashtag. And we're gonna be drawing some winners at the end um, for some fabulous prizes. And so I am knitting up the chestnut cardigan, which again, I will say the pattern right now is not size inclusive. It only goes up to an XXL, which covers a oh, 48 to 50. Yes, because the XL is what I'm making and it's from a, it's for a 44 to 46 inch bust. I have a 45 inch bust. So I'm making the chestnut cardigan. Here is a picture of the finished piece. What it will look like when it's all done. It is knit in pieces, bottom up and seamed. Um, it's true fair isle, so there's only over two colors per, per row. Um, what else can I say? There's eight colors in this one. I'll show you the yarns in a minute. And I am, like I mentioned, I'm going to name the extra large size. And um, the only thing that I did, like in terms of modifications, was I accidentally made it longer in the body. And again, that was just because I wasn't paying attention and got into a groove of knitting and couldn't stop. So I have finished the back piece. And the front left panel, I'm working on the front right panel. I haven't finished it. I'm sorry, for you people who watch every episode, I'm really sorry. I feel like I keep showing the same thing over and over and over again. <laughs> but I can show you that I did make some progress. Okay, so here's the little mushroom stitch progress keeper. That's where I was last time. And I, so I did do quite a bit. I have done the, um, do yes. I've done the armhole shaping now and I'm just about, I think I have like three more rows to go and then I'll be starting the neck shaping and, and then I'll be done this piece and then it's just the sleeves to go and then seam everything together and oh, pick up and do the, the button band and the collar 
and uh, and then weave in like all my thousands of ends and I will say I have been trying to weave in as I go uh, like as I knit um but sometimes it's just complicated like sometimes when you're adding in two new colors like you're switching to the next round and has two two brand new colors and so you've cut the previous two colors so that's four ends that you have I just get I get I have a hard time <laughs> I have a hard time knitting the ends in as I'm going when there's too many ends so so that'll be fun going back I've tried to to sit down and just weave in a few ends at a time along the way um but I hate weaving in ends I'm not gonna lie I would much rather seam than weave in ends like I would seam anything <laughs> I love mattress stitch now I love it actually I used mattress stitch on this Duchesne top it was it's like magic I love it can't even see the seams okay so yeah so this is the chestnut I'll show you a close-up so you can oh so you can see all the colors in there it's really pretty really really pretty and so these are my messy yarns over here so I can show them to you They're getting messier and messier as time goes on. So there's eight different colors and I'm using the original called for yarn. I bought this as a kit on Marie Wallen's website last year. It, I got it on sale. Yeah, it was like a 10% off sale or something like that. So I took the opportunity to purchase my first kit from her um, as long as well as her first pattern, my first pattern of hers and her yarn for the first time. So it was still really pricey not gonna lie um british breeds is not cheap at least not for myself living in canada um i think i think i found it as cheap as 11.25 a skein at the knitting loft in toronto um but it's like these are 25 gram they're tiny little balls so 11.25 yeah like if you times that by four that's like 44 over $44 for like a 100 gram skein kind of thing. Anyways, pricey. Probably won't knit with it again, but it's been a great experience. And the wool is gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. So it's 100% British wool made in the UK. And it's a fine blend of wool spun in Devon from the Blueface Leicester, Exmoor, Wensleydale, and Zwart Bulls sheep breeds. There's the tag. Yeah, very lovely. All the colors are very, like, are heathered. There's some complexities to the colors, which is really lovely to knit with. And it smells very sheepy if you like sheepy yarns. Yeah, really, really nice. Um, yeah, I should also say I'm not sponsored by anybody. I just talk about what I love on this podcast. <laughs> okay, so so that's it for the um, Marie Wallen cardigan. Oh, and I forgot to mention... There's been so many beautiful finished objects on on Instagram that people have posted for the make along and and works in progress and everything. And I tr I've been trying to post them on Fridays and in honor of Feral Fridays. Um, so if you're interested in checking that out, you can follow along with the hashtag or check out my stories. And we also have a Slack group that um, that we're using. Slack is an app. It's similar to Discord. Basically, it's like a chatting group with different threads I've removed my group from well I've stopped using the group on Ravelry and we've moved it over to slack and that's for the knitting with cat hair podcast group as a whole but there's also a, a thread in there in there on the slack app specific to the Marie Wallen make along where we're all talking about talking about the make along and inspiration and and yeah it's been really fun really great if you'd like to join i will put a link down below you can click on that link and um, it might ask you to install this app called slack uh, if you have it already that's great you can probably just join in no problem um, if you have any issues don't hesitate to reach out to me either down below in the comments or you can send me a message on ravelry or instagram and i will make sure you get added okay so moving on, now I have three new cast-ons. I went a little crazy. <laughs> I had a bit of cast-onitis. So which one should I start with? Okay, I'll start with the, I'll go oldest to newest cast-ons. <laughs> so in the past three weeks, 
housed in this adorable little fox bag by My Needle Crafts, which is a Canadian Etsy bag maker. And this Soldatna crop is a pattern by Caitlin Hunter, also known as Boyland Knitworks. I'll pop in a picture of the original design so you can see what it looks like. And I cast this on kind of out of a necessity. So I have a, a linen dress, a gold linen dress and a beigey pinky linen skirt that I ordered a couple years ago from Not Perfect Linen. And um, I'm always looking for tops to wear with. I've had this Soldatna crop in my queue for quite a while, I think. Um, it's always, it's been on my radar for quite a while anyways. So I went stash diving and looked through my fingering, actually it's a DK weight pattern. So I went through and looked for DK weight yarns that I had in my stash first. And then when I couldn't find enough DK weight yarns that kind of blended together, gave the color cohesion that I wanted, I started looking at my fingering weight stash. And so I came up with four colors, all from Stash, which I'm so happy to be using. And these are um, mostly very deep Stash. Like, well, I don't know what you consider deep Stash, but for me, it's like three plus years. <laughs> so it's been lingering for quite some time. So I'll just show you what I have so far. Make sure I show you the front. Ugh. So this is my Soldatna crop. This color is turning out really green. It's more of a really pale kind of mint, I guess. You can kind of tell in the body, it's a lot lighter. Anyways, yeah, so um, the only actual DK weight yarn that I'm using is this uh, turquoise color, which is Madeline Tosh DK in the colorway Blue Stowe. And I had bought a sweater's quantity of it a long time ago and just never ended up using it. I actually gifted half of it to a friend of mine and then had four skeins left. I was like, what am I gonna do with this? So this is where, <laughs> this is where it ended up. So far I've only used one ball. I have three more, so I'll definitely have enough. It's a crop top, so. So that's a DK weight. Then this mint or green color, greeny turquoisey color is lichen and lace sock. It's a fingering weight held double and it is in the color beach glass. This dark gold, which is actually perfectly slightly darker than the dress that I'm trying to match with. So I think it's going to look really great. I've already held it up with the dress. It looks really nice. Um, this color is called maple and it's by, um, uh, Georgian Bay Fiber Co, which was a local to me yarn dyer here in Sudbury, who unfortunately is no longer um, in business. But it's a BFL, fingering white BFL, so I've held it double. And then finally, the last color, this background color is like a pinky, pinky beige color. That is another Madeline Tosh, and it is the sock, which actually has no nylon in it, FYI, and I've I think I've knit socks out of Mad Tosh sock before and it did not, they, they, they didn't hold up. But anyways, um, yeah, so I'm holding it double as well. And it, the colorway I think is called Antique Lace. So yeah, that's my Soldatna crop. And yeah, I'm not too, not too far off. I really like the body. It's got this like, I don't know if you call it flea or lace pattern along it. It just looks really cute to me. So, I am knitting, what size am I making? Size six, which is for 52.5 inch bust. Um, it is a size up from what I was planning on making. And the reasoning behind that is because I, I've heard mixed reviews about Caitlin Hunter patterns, specifically around the fit. So I'll, I've popped in a picture of what the um, original design looked like, but you'll notice that the neckline on it is quite, is quite like low. Um, mine is kind of funnily looking, even though I did do some modifications to prevent the funneling thing from happening. So essentially what I did was I just cast on, um, 120 stitches and disregarded like the increases. So I didn't increase until I started getting to the actual color work part. I think, I think that's how I did it. 
it's still a bit funnily. I'm not sure I like that. I would highly recommend that if you are going to make this pattern that you read through the notes and make sure that, um, yeah, make sure that you're doing something that you're going to be happy with in the end. Cause I feel like she's been notorious. Caitlin Hunter has been notorious for showing pictures of the finished project that looks nothing like, or not, I shouldn't say nothing like, but doesn't look exactly like the pattern that she actually gives you to follow. So that that's kind of a concern. But yeah, um, what else can I say? I am using U, oh, I used US 3, 3.25 millimeter needles for the ribbing. And I'm using US 5, 3.75 millimeters for the body. And doo -doo, I think that's it. So that's all I wanted to say about this. So yeah, I should have this done by definitely by next episode. I had to actually tell myself to stop. This has been a super quick knit. Um, you could easily pump this out in a week or two. It's so quick just because it's a bigger, like a larger uh, yarn size. You're using, I don't know, the color work makes it go so fast, I find. <laughs> and it's a crop top, so it's short. Oh, and in terms of the sleeves, I'm just going to go back. I have it on waist yarn. I'm just going to go back and put in a couple rounds of ribbing to kind of match the uh, the neck. And that, that'll be it. So I'm not doing long sleeves or anything like that. It is a crop top. So, okay, that is my Soldatna housed in this bag by Longview Creations. That always attracts cat hair. <laughs> Cannot keep it clean. Um... It's a cute elephant bag. Uh, yeah, Longview Creations is also a Canadian Etsy bag maker. And housed in here, because I had finished my Into the Woods socks, I decided I should cast on another pair of socks. And I don't know, I was on this like, want to use up, trying to use up stash kick. So <laughs> I used the same two yarns that I used for my Into the Woods socks, which were um, they're both by Urso Yarn Co. And uh, the top one is th uh, their Mouton base, which is a Dorset. Is it a Dorset? Yes, Dorset base. And um, in the color Lycorn. And then this peachy brown is their Petite Face Bleu, which is um, BFL, Blue Face Lester. And yeah, they're both an 80-20, I think it's so 80% Dorset, 20% Nylon, 80% BFL, 20% Nylon. But they're both non-superwash and they're so lovely together. So I'm just doing a simple two at a time vanilla socks. Um, I wanted to put a little, I don't know why, I think because I made the, oh, what are they called? The snow, snow mittens, soft snow mittens by Chemoborn. Uh, Sophia Camelborn, and she did did this little um, trim with a contrasting color, which I thought looked so cute on the mittens. So I did that on my socks. And so I just did a bunch of ribbing. I don't know if I even wrote down how much. Uh, no, I didn't say. Anyways, looks like seven or eight rounds total of ribbing one by one. And then I switched to a three by one rib. So it'll be nice and stretchy. And I'm going to use this obviously for the, the main part of the socks and then I'll do the toes and cuffs or to, toes and heels in the light corn. Yeah. So I'm knitting those up on my standard US 1 2.25 millimeter chowgu needles. Um, like I mentioned, I'm doing them two at a time because I just I prefer that I find it just saves me from second sock syndrome and it uh, it just feels like it goes faster for some reason I don't know that it actually does but yeah okay so that's one new cast on and then sorry about that I'm just gonna take a sip of coffee okay and then I was craving color and totally inspired by what few flowers I have growing in my garden right now, which happen to be some crocuses. I'll pop a picture in of the inspiration picture for these socks, although you may have seen it on the thumbnail. I used it as well, or a similar picture anyways. Um, 
yeah, I cast on a pair of, they are called DK Weight Vanilla Socks. They're by the Crazy Sock Lady, and it's a free pattern on Ravelry. So I kind of just used the numbers from it to, I've never knit DK socks before. Actually, that's a lie. I made one pair for my partner. Oh my gosh. Several years ago anyways. It's been a while. So I wasn't re remembering how many, how many stitches I should cast on for myself. And um, these are for me. So I used the numbers and the size of needles. So I am using size US3, I believe. Yes, US3. I'm making the size medium, which is you cast on 48 stitches. And I am holding my fingering weight yarns double. So I'm totally late to the marling party as well. I've never marled before. And I have to say, it is so addictive. <laughs> so these are a marled DK sock. Aren't they so fun? <laughs> I went through my stash. These are all stash yarns. I went through my stash and found um, a series of like random skeins that I thought would work together. So they're all, they're not all different, but um, yeah, these are like deep stash. Again, deep stash, which I'm so happy I'm putting to use. So this is a Knit Picks Hawthorne. Um, they're all, these are all sock yarns with the exception of one. So this is a sock yarn. I can't remember the name of the color way for that one. This purpley pink here is um, Polka Dot Creek Date Night. It came in a sock set. Um, next up here, I can show it here. There's a light yellow that's um, Dijon colorway and that's Hedgehog Fibers sock. Then there's a darker yellow here and that is Hedgehog Fibers again, their sock base and it's called Fool's Gold. It, gold is the colorway and then finally at the end you can see there's this solid kind of very bright yellow it's not showing up nearly as bright on the screen but it's very bright it's like almost like fluorescent yellow um that's another hedgehog fibers it's not a sock yarn it is a skinny single and the colorway is egg yolk and so um i've held it together when I was marling, I held it together with a sock yarn, like um, I think fool, the fool's gold, gold, just because it, it doesn't have any nylon in it and I didn't want the, <laughs> the tip of the toe to like wear out. But yeah, so these are my socks. And so in terms of the marling, the way that I did it, um, firstly, I knit, I think 10 rounds of two by two ribbing. And I think that was what Kay recommended in her pattern too. I think I may have borrowed that. Um, and then I did uh, 12 rows holding this color and the next color that I wanted to add in. So that would be that light, light pinky purple. So I held one strand of each together for 12 rows. Then I dropped this um, pink color and then held two strands of the pinky purple together. And then I dropped one strand of the pinky purple and held one strand of it in the next color I wanted to marl together, which was the um, that light yellow. Continued on in that manner. So always dropping one after the 12 rounds. And I did a slip stitch heel and I did put the garter, uh, garter edge on it just to make it easier to pick up stitches. I picked up an extra stitch right in here when I was picking up, knit through the back loop, and that closes the gap and makes sure you don't have any holes. So yeah, I'm really happy with them. <laughs> They're making me really happy. So I'm normally, I don't know, I've kind of moved away from really bright colors. Like this is stuff I would have bought like five years ago. This was my color palette kind of thing right and and I've moved away to more subtle like earth tones and solids tonals and I forgot how fun speckles can actually be yeah so I knit this up in a day not even a full day like a day that's with working and everything like so quick because it's DK weight again DK weight and the marling just keeps your interest it's just so fun so yeah I highly recommend um trying your hand at some Go grab a couple skeins of yarn and throw them together. Like, you wouldn't think. I don't know. Maybe you would. I've just, I've never really been great at putting fades together. But 
I'll just show you some of the colors here together so you can see what they look like in the skein. So these are the three yellows. Whoop. That I used. And then the pinky purple. Yeah. Yeah, marling is fun. I could see myself doing like a marly, marled um, blanket with like leftovers. That'd be really fun. Really fun. So yeah, and there's, oh my gosh, DK socks are so comfy. <laughs> I've never worn a pair before. I tried these on, they're so comfortable. So as I mentioned at the beginning of the podcast, um, I've tried some visible mending. Uh, this is my first time doing it. And I've been interested in the idea for quite some time. And I actually purchased a, a few books actually from a um, used bookstore last year or the year before. They weren't specific specific to visible creative mending. They were Sashiko, I think is the name, um, which is a, is a Japanese um, kind of stitching techniques. So yeah, so um, I, <laughs> I did very basic stuff here. Um, my partner was kind enough to give me his jeans that have uh, had holes in them in the crotch area um, to give to kind of give things a go. So <laughs> this is this is what I did. So I, I did go on YouTube and I watched a bunch of videos as well about in terms of like how to mend a hole in jeans because I've never done that. So I was like, oh, can I just sew the pieces together no you you, you kind of want to patch it and if there's like areas that are getting worn out um it's always good to patch those two and then do some mending i'll show you what i mean by that so these were a pair of his jeans <laughs> that i've mended okay so i was very proud of myself <laughs> doing all this i'll show you close up what it looks like Ugh. Um, I finished it and it took me hours of work. Okay. Like hours to do all the little hand stitching and everything. I show it to my daughter. I'm like, look, I'm so proud. I fixed your dad's jeans. And she's like, mom, it looks like his, his underwear are showing. <laughs> and she's not wrong. <laughs> so I think, oh man, it looks like he's wearing like dark blue underwear with spots on it <laughs> and they're showing through a rip um yeah so in the future lesson learned i will be using lighter colored patches so i used what i had and it happened to be actually an old pair of my daughter's jeans that were obviously darker than these jeans and so when i patched it you can visibly see it um but yeah so i did a whole bunch of stitching oh, i can show you all around you can barely see it because i did it in light blue and of course across there and then over here see where there's some worn bits so yeah this the videos that i was watching were suggesting yeah like you'd want to patch that now but the patch actually yeah extends out to here so that's just to prevent any future holes in that area. I fixed it as best as I could. And he he still wears them. He doesn't care. And when they're on, you can't really see. Like, you don't really see this. I know it looks like it's right on his butt. But, like, when he's walking or whatever and he has his, his body's in it, you don't really see it. So, you catch a glimpse. Anyways, that was my first one. And then I got lazy on my second one because I was tired. So, this one... And these are a stretchy pair of jeans. So I had to use a stretchy material. I just, again, cut up my daughter's stretchy jeans that she doesn't wear. And this time I didn't put anything on the patch. I just did around. I just did some circles. But there's so many beautiful like flower motifs. I asked him if I could do that. He, he wasn't big on the flower idea. So he just got plain simple stitching. But like, yeah, there's gorgeous ideas out there. Um, there's little plaid motifs that you can do. Like it's just, there's the options are endless. And I'm lucky in that because I cross stitch, I've 
collected over the the years like several like I don't know how many colors of thread I have like hundreds of colors of thread so there's lots of options to to play with color and and have fun and I'm looking forward to doing my own jeans and doing something really fun and creative and now that I know better um definitely using you know especially in the butt area I think you don't I think you want to try and blend in the patch Yeah, maybe I should have done invisible creative mending in the butt area. <laughs> oh, well, live and learn. So that's it. Yeah, th that's all the making chat I have for you today. Um, that's what I've been up to. I've, I've done a few other things. I've worked on um, my Battenberg blanket a little bit. I did some cream color squares and started piecing them together with the other colors and stuff. So that's, yeah, I'll, maybe I'll show that next time when I have a bit more to show. Um, other than that, I have been thoroughly enabled by everyone around me <laughs> and buying yarn like a mad woman. <sighs> I don't know what it is. I feel like it's this time of year. Honestly, at this time of year, for whatever reason, I get this urge to start buying all the yarn for all the projects. So I bought um i'll talk about the ones that i have intended projects for so i bought f four cones <laughs> a whole scarn from their website they had a sale i've never bought a cone of yarn before and selma of little big knits happened to you know advertise that the whole scarn was having a sale and i was like oh my gosh so of course i jumped right on there and i did calculations and it was still cheaper for me to buy cones of yarn from is it denmark i think they're in denmark it was cheaper for me to buy their cones that were on sale and pay the ship the crazy shipping to come to canada than for me to actually buy the cones in canada so it's just shouldn't be that way <laughs> but it is so yes i bought four cones um i'll tell you the colors i got i got shuffle which is a brown a really pretty brown i got uh, nougat which is like a, a white with like kind of i think it's like gray flex in it maybe it's not pure white um and then i got tobacco which is like a red brown which is really pretty and sweet pea which is this beautiful delicate pink pale pink color and I'm thinking I'm going to use that um, the sweet pea to make the daffodil sweater either the daffodil sweater from Marie Wallen because I have her springtime book her springtime collection or I might make the uh, clover which is a free pattern on Ravelry by Marie Wallen which FYI, Magda of the Magda Knits podcast just finished in this gorgeous, like, I think it was cinnamon color from Wooly Knit. Beautiful. Really, really beautiful. And, um, yeah, I kind of want to make that as well. So I don't know. I don't know. Options. So, yeah, just so you know, the cones come and they have, like, I think they're 500 grams each. And they're, so they're equivalent to 10 balls of Holzgarn yarn. Holzgarn super soft. So yeah, lots of yarn. I think it's like 3,100 yards or something on a cone, but I think it's a light fingering. So it's not like, it's a little bit thinner. Anyways, I'm sure I'll have fun putting those to use. So that's, uh, I ordered those and then I ordered, um, oh, the chickadees are out. And then I ordered uh, yesterday on a complete and utter whim. Oh, by the way, I've been watching, I don't know if you guys watch this, but The Woolly Thistle, which is an excellent podcast and is also a online shop in the US. Um, and they provide all the woolly yarns from, from the UK, I think. Actually, I think they carry more than that. But anyways, they, they do, um, they carry things like, you know, the British Breeds or uh, Jameson's, Jameson Smith, I think they carry. Anyways, 
really lovely podcast. And on their most recent episode, they did an interview with Marie Wallen. She was talking about her brand new book that's coming out on May 1st. Uh, so in a couple days, today is April 29th. So yeah, in a few days, she's going to be releasing her new book and they showed all the patterns and actually Marie had the sample, some of the samples, I think she may have had all the samples. I can't remember, but anyway, she was showing the samples and from the new book. So I just want to say that she has expanded her sizes in this new book, which is awesome. Um, it's a lot more size inclusive. I think it goes up to a 3X, 3XL or something like that. So definitely better than it was. Um, and she's also got um, designs for men in there too, which is really cool. So there's a whole range of, of uh, projects. So there's like women's, you know, tr like feral sweaters. Uh, there's a vest, there's a uh, cabled cardigan. I think that might've been for the men, but I mean, you could, they're universal, really. She has a gorgeous men's feral sweater in there as well that really I loved. It was in blues and browns. It was really beautiful. Um, oh, butterfly. That's my first butterfly. Sorry, distracted. <laughs> um, what else was I going to say? Then there's accessories as well. So there's like some hats and scarves and cowls, I think. So yeah, a wide range of things. They're all designed with her British Breeds yarn um, specifically, which makes it a little difficult for me because I do want to get the book. I think the book is fantastic. It's beautiful. There's so many lovely patterns in there, but um, I just find that the, the her yarn, I've already mentioned this, is, is very pricey and it just doesn't, it's, it's kind of cost prohibitive for me, especially right at this point. Anyways, all this to say, <laughs> that the new book is coming out Cumbria May 1st looks amazing you should check it out um, but that inspired me and made me want to order a kit <laughs> for another one of her patterns that I have had my eye on for quite a while um, it's called the Samfrey I just love the colors in it it's knit up in um, Jameson's of Shetland yarn and oh my gosh, I forget how many colors are in it. I think it's like 14 or 16 colors. It's crazy. There's a lot of colors, uh, but it's just gorgeous. Uh, I'll have popped in a picture. And yeah, I've been eyeing it for quite some time. So I placed an order with Camilla, Camilla Valley Farm, who carries the whole collection of Jameson's of Shetland. <laughs> There's a... Sorry, there's a chickadee on my uh, on the umbrella pecking it at a seat. It's distracting me, um, but it's lovely to see spring spring wildlife coming out. Um, yeah, so I ordered the kit. I also ordered her Shetland book, I, which is where the Samfrey is from, because there's so many gorgeous patterns in that. Oh my gosh, the yell is in there. Um, which many people are familiar with. It's a huge oversized like boxy cardigan. Uh, the Brisset sweater, which I think, I th think Alexandra's still making it from November Woods Fiber Co. I think she's still making it. I, we haven't heard from her in a while. I'm not sure. She's been very quiet. Um, but yeah, there's, there's so many beautiful projects in that Shetland book. So I think I'll get lots of use out of it too. And I think all of the designs, actually, I don't know for sure. I think they're designed in Jameson's of Shetland. So to me, that's just, it's just a more, much more affordable option. I've never used their yarn yet before, so I'm excited to do that. I also ordered the, uh, their shade card. So I'm hoping that once I get the Cumbria book, which I will be buying at some point, I can use the shade card to try and substitute with Marie Wallen's yarns. Um, yeah. So that's it um, in terms of future plans. So those are what I'm eyeing. I don't know. I'm going to be do done the Soldatna very shortly. And then I will only have my Marie Wallen sweater on the needles, which is crazy. I'll have to start thinking about a second, um, a second top. I'm not sure. Oh yeah. Duh. I'm going to be casting on another Marie Wallen. I forgot with the cone. <laughs> I'll be making a, la it's a, a lace lace and textured sweater so yeah that'll keep me busy 
So anyways, yeah, I think that's it for the making talk. Um, in terms of life stuff, uh, again, still not much happening around here. We're just uh, laying low. I think we're going to get the bikes out this weekend and go for a bike ride. So that'll be fun because I think it's supposed to be sunny. And I know it's in the single digits right now, but it feels so warm to me because we've had such cold weather lately that it, it feels like this is this is quite comfortable. I can't believe I'm wearing this shirt in like seven degree weather right now. It's just seven Celsius. It's crazy. Um, We've noticed an influx in wildlife lately. Uh, I'll pop in a video of the little uh, snowshoe hare that has discovered our, our yard. They, this happens most years, we end up with a snowshoe hare. Um, we have a lot of clover in our front yard, not so much grass, mostly clover and weeds, <laughs> and they seem to really like it. So that's fine. Um, they're adorable, they're so cute. And this one, um, I don't know if you can tell from the video. I couldn't really see it in the video, but when I looked at the rabbit, um, I could see that his feet, his or her, their feet were still white and the ears were still slightly white, like it hadn't completely changed color yet. So in the winter they turn white and obviously to blend in with the snow because we get, <laughs> we get snow here, lots of snow. And um, so there's always that awkward kind of stage between seasons where the, the hairs are still, you know, changing color so they stand out like a sore thumb. So yeah, it's kind of funny. When we have really early springs all of a sudden, like all the snow is gone and you just see these white rabbits, right, white hairs, jumping around. It's like they stand out so, uh, so easily. <laughs> it's kind of funny. So yeah, it was cute. It was cute until the day after I took that video, I caught this, probably the same rabbit. I don't know, same hair in my uh, center flower garden in the front yard, pulling out my tulips and eating them. <laughs> like, you know what? <laughs> you know what? Have, have, a, have a bite of the tulips, but don't pull them out. Like you're gonna wreck them now. They're not gonna grow. Oh, and you know what? I was blaming the squirrel because I had noticed that there had been some tulips pulled out and I thought it was the squirrels doing it, but maybe it was, maybe it was the hair all along. I don't know. Anyways, they're welcome to eat my tulips. I'll just plant more. <laughs> this gives me an excuse to plant different ones. Um, yeah, so, okay, sorry. I'm just looking over my yard and I noticed there's a big hole that's been dug by something. Um, probably the raccoons. I think we discovered that last year. Yeah, and the raccoons have been around. They are funny creatures. We caught a video, not a video. We caught them one evening because they're more nocturnal. You usually see them at night. Anyways, there were a bunch of them in our backyard and they were digging holes. And like, I think they're eating the bugs. Like we have lots of worms and stuff. I think they're eating the worms. Anyway, so they, they leave all these holes all over our backyard. Luckily, like we've kind of given up on our grass and just let whatever grows, grows. So we're not that fussy about it. But um, yeah. Oh, speaking of growing, I had a look in my back corner. I'm trying to create a kind of a berry bush section, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. I planted a raspberry bush last year and one strawberry plant. And I went and looked and the raspberry bush is doing fine. It's still there. Um, the strawberry plant, it was one and it was little. It was like, you know, little. It has spread all over. The whole corner is like strawberries. I am so excited. So very excited. As long as the critters don't eat all my strawberries on me before I get a chance to pick them. We didn't get any last year because I just planted it and it just, just didn't happen. But yeah, so anyways, I hope that you are doing well and I hope that there's sunshine where you are, regardless of if you're in the northern or southern hemisphere and you're moving into spring or autumn. I hope there's some sunshine and that you're getting lots of making done and I will talk to you all in three weeks. Mm -hmm.